This is another of the very latest Meccano Engineering and Robotics sets, the 5-in-1 Roadster with pull back and go motor, in other words really clockwork. To me this looks a bit Jaguar F-type-ish, but I'll leave that to your imagination. This one here came from Wilkinson's for £15. I've noticed it on the Smiths, or Smythes if you prefer, toy shop website for £14.99, so the same. The excavator is available and the Rally Racer is available at Argos and you may find one or two of the others filtering through to be honest these have come through very early to my mind usually we are a little bit more towards Easter and this year Easter's falling around the end of March so I would have thought that it would have been another month before these started to show up but we need new stuff because you go into a toy shop any toy shop small large chain and they're all full well not full but there's a, a lot of the plastic brick rubbish and these are just one of the toys that are somewhat hidden. Meccano you'll generally find in say Smythes in with all the other construction sets other than the plastic brick rubbish and none of them really get much of a chance either. We want to show off Meccano and of course we'll do it in all the good points and all the bad points and hopefully we'll bring some more folk into the hobby because it's in desperate need of it really. You might call that Meccano politics I suppose but anyway let's get on with the set it's a French set tear off strip level 2 novice and parts wise 174 we've also got the other build details build time 1 to 3 hours complexity novice and the mechanism is beginner on the rear we've got the five models you can build with the set now going back to the Rally Racer set and the model I built, I built the main model which is very good actually, a uh, few little niggles but so far very good. This set, as you can see, the five models, only perhaps a couple of them will be shown in the book. That's the norm these days. Same with the Rally Racer set, there's ten models to be built in that set and there's only three shown. That's fine, you download the rest, but you can't when they aren't available. The Rally Racer set, extra models, the instructions for those weren't available so I emailed Meccano, they got back to me next working day quite quickly sent me a link didn't work emailed them back sorry the link is not available yet now I'm guessing the link that they sent me was for the one that's supposed to be on the website well I knew that didn't work because it's in there at all what I would say is that don't release the sets until all the instructions are available to be put online because in the case of that rally racer set a 10 in 1 set is currently only a 3 in 1 set I was supposed to ring them, or well, they asked me to, but I can't see what the benefit that, that would be over emailing them, but maybe I will. Five models, the main model, sort of the uh, coupe, or drophead coupe I suppose, or roadster, cabriolet, sort of, let's say, jaguar F-type-ish, some sort of racing truck, it looks a bit odd. Classic sports car, maybe, shall we say, MG style, perhaps. A slightly more modern looking Formula One car, and I've missed my favourite out to last, this sort of 1960s Formula One racing car, perhaps there. That's interesting, because um, that's before my time to be honest, but it, from that small picture, it looks a good model. By that I mean, it looks to have some detail of the original real cars. I suppose it's a Lotus being green. I, sp well, I suppose it could be a Van Wall, they were green as well, weren't they, I think. Of course, to, the, to you, <laughs> Van Wall might mean, what? <laughs> I'm going back a long time. Anyway, so that looks really good. The main model looks good. The classic sports car looks good as well. They actually have some close resemblance to the real thing. Okay, it's only a small set, so we don't expect massive amount of detail, but a good representation. It's good. Right, here goes, folks. I lost the battle of the tear-off strip yet again. Um, you can tell with this one there's been a lot of extra glue used I think and yet again we have a nicely filled box well well filled box for the parts that are in the set now this is a common comment from myself but if you think about it it also saves if you want to be green about it it saves the planet helps I suppose not so much paper used to make the boxes and you could say the same about the bags let's hope that that is the case uh, double triple bag in again great Normally they fall out. <laughs> yeah, bags are far too big for that. But, you know, it, it really, it's, it's a common thing. Nicely put together, it seems. Instruction manual. Really nice shine. It seems a better quality paper. 
I said this before, but the French manuals seem to have a slightly less quality paper, less quality print, but not this one. This is as good as the Chinese, and the stitching doesn't go quite to the edge on this one. Normally it doesn't go anywhere near the edge with the French ones. As is the norm, there we have the construction tips, and on the other side we have the table of contents, or the table of models really. It's nice to see that the one I want to build is actually included in the instructions. So you've got three, the main model, the sort of Jaguar F-Type, the 1960s Formula 1 racing car, the racing truck of some description, the other two, the more modern Formula 1 racing car, which you could probably are, actually that looks quite modern really, maybe uh, bang up to date, but not far off, and the classic sort of MG style sports car. This is the first page of the instructions for the, oh let's call it a Jaguar F-Type. As we can see, quite clear, well very clear, inset parts list clearer than normal to be honest. They seem a little bit bigger maybe, I don't know. White outline and of course this large black mass here is the pull back and go motor. Now folks, I don't have one, indeed I've never had one to show you, but there was a pull back and motor included in some of the turbo sets from probably seven or eight, maybe even ten years ago now, maybe even a bit more than that. Never had one of those. I've had some of the smaller turbo sets. There was a little go-kart that didn't have the motor and it was very small, it was only about three inches long altogether. Whether this motor is the same as that, I don't know. If you know better, let me know and uh, post a picture on the Meccano Zone Facebook page or forum. So this may be the same, it may not be the same. Normally with some of the 1990s parts, the actual years on them, especially the plastic Meccano, the junior stuff. So we'll wait and see when we get to that. Moving on a few pages, as you can see, a lot of the construction up to that stage is included in the image. Now with some of the latest sets, and include the Rally Racer set, that's been a bit irritating to be honest, because it makes, by default, parts of the build, and it's normally the bit you want to look at, very small. But in this case, it's still very clear. This is the model that appeals to me the most out of the set, although there's three or four out of the five that really appeal. But this is the one that uh, appeals to me the most, the sort of 1960s Formula One racing car. And it appeals because, in a basic way, it does a very good job of replicating the main features of that car, or the main look of the car. Now, without going into things with too much detail, everything is dog these days is fuel injected. Now, this would have carburettors, and indeed most things did up to probably the 1990s, I suppose. Then things started to go fuel injection, mainly because for the emissions. Now, I ain't going to go into it too much. One reason is because I don't know that much about it myself. <laughs> but this sort of car, and as I say, most normal cars up to the 1990s had carburettors. Now, you'd be better off Googling that, but basically you need to make the fuel and the air to make it go bang once you've got the spark and they use carburettors now these race cars or at least some of them had the carburettors on the top of the engine and in this model there would have probably been eight separate ones probably for a v8 engine but again i am no expert now these sort of trumpet mouth pieces where the air came in were on the top of the engine and these are replicated in a basic form except for the one of course that's due to the system and the angle of parts you can see all these bolt heads sort of replicate that if you just google images for those sort of period cars around the 1960s have a look and it sort of does it quite well exhausts at the back as well look pretty good and in the right sort of place maybe a little high if i was honest tires in proportion to the rest of the car. There'll be skinny tyres then. I say I could go into it all day. I mean, carburettors I know a bit more about than fuel injection, but just to point out that it does replicate some of the detail features of the real thing very well, but in a basic way. Right then, folks, skipping right to the back of the book, the parts. Let's see what we've got new. Well, looking through, I dare say the tyres are a different pattern, so partly new. We've got the pull-back-and-go motor there. Again, if anybody knows whether that's the same as the one used in the 1990s into the early 2000s with the turbo sets, let me know. We will have a look at the motor. That might give it away if there's a date on it. But of course we've got some parts that we wouldn't have seen before. The windscreen, for example. This sort of triangular plate here with the nose cut off, if you like, or the point cut off. And this part here looks angled on the one side more than the other. That looks new. Looks like we've got some lights, but they ain't new. They've been around for quite some time. Not much in the way of metal strips, in fact not, no metal strips at all. We do have some metal parts, some brackets, obtuse brackets, corner brackets. We've got eight washers. Standard bolts, we've only got 19, but that's 
pound six or just under one pound sixty. So standard bolts and the nuts around three quid. Then there's that chunk of a motor. You're already at sort of half the price of the set without including the other parts. So pretty decent value. Right, folks. Let's have a look at some of the new parts, or I think I knew one is not. Firstly, obviously the stickers be specific to this set. I don't recall seeing this sort of triangular plate around as yet. Quite a decent representation of British Racing Green, although that in itself is subject to some variables. It's not always the same green. This part was in the Rally Racer set. I didn't think it was new at the time, but since I've built a model with that, I'm fairly sure that's a new part. Sort of a, another version of the Trunnion, if you like. Flat Trunnion. This one I thought was new, but it isn't. It's just the angle in the instructions make it look a bit odd shaped, but it's not. That's in the LaFerrari set, I think. Tyres, well, tyres, you know, sizes of tyres generally don't change too much. Don't know if this will focus that closely, but hopefully you can see there's a, a slightly new, different tread pattern. And it only says M on the tyre, not Meccano, which is a shame. New wheel by the looks of it, but again, if you know any different, let us know. Quite nice looking. Windscreen, of course, which is very much specific to the set and the motor. Well folks, I think we've sussed it with the motor. It is the older motor used some years ago and in this case it's got 09 on it. Now I can't see why, it may even be November 09, but I can't see why that would be on at all. I don't know what the RL there is for after Meccano. You may not be able to see it. The camera will struggle if I go really really close, although it has got some macro facility. We've also got the part numbers stamped on. We've got two on this one. Now that is a fairly new thing over the last two or three years. No idea what that code means but I've seen similar on the boxes themselves. It's not that big is it really? Um, pretty compact. Now if we count the holes or where the hole should be in the normal way, that's, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes that's three and a half inches. I've dug out a two inch pulley, probably from the 1970s. Let's see how true it runs. We'll just put it on the screwdriver, like that, and spin it. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's a rarity. <laughs> and we'll put it on the triaxle, as you can see. 1970s parts fit fine on more modern stuff. Just have to tighten up the screw, or the bolt, if you prefer that on a flat side of the triaxle. There we go. And now we have to wind it up by pulling it back. Which is going to be a bit awkward just in this shot. Of course once the cars are built it will be a lot easier to do it with two wheels on the axle and a lot more space to do it than I can do it on camera. But as you can see and it's got some power, I can feel it already, it's taking some and when it clicks it's ready and we'll let it go that's got some go that has that really has got some go that really has got some poke, they're gonna fly I tell you this is a great way to bring kids on it's no batteries, they're gonna go really well as long as you keep the weight down that is and with the plastic parts that's certainly a lot easier to do but these sort of things are a great way at shows I've been to all sorts of shows over the last oh my, might be nearly five years now some fairly large some small some are mainly meetings really where the public are not really allowed in that's probably an insurance thing but you can go usually by asking whoever's in charge of the meeting just ask sometimes it costs you a couple of quid on the door sort of thing or for group club funds and you'll see all sorts of models from new stuff, old stuff, vintage stuff, ancient stuff, massive stuff, small stuff, complicated, basic. The trouble is some shows, not all, but some shows have nothing for the youngster to get their hands on. One or two, especially the London based clubs it seems, have a really good setup for the kids where they can build, well anything they want really, but there are some plans as well. That's always a good thing. Obviously for safety reasons you can't let the kids touch everything. And not everybody is as careful as they might be. So you've got to have something that they can touch. Generally a good thing to see something 
moving, working as well. And these are a good way of moving that hands-on a little bit further. So perhaps you could build models based around these motors and get the kids to race them in a simple drag race. Another level to it, if you like. Anyway, I've wound this one up. If I was honest, I didn't tighten it up properly and, and pull it fell off. So here we go again. That is pokey. Really is pokey. Very good indeed. And quite a long run as well. So there you are. That is the new old <laughs> pull back and go motor. So there you go folks, the Meccano Engineering and Robotics 5-in-1 model Roadster set. £15 or thereabouts, available Wilkinson's, looks like Smith's Toy Shop or Smythe's. It may even be available at Argos. This set, the Excavator set and the Rally Racer set all seem to be available on the high street in those shops. As usual folks, shop around. There's been quite a bit of discussion on the Meccano Zone Facebook page on the values and prices and, let's be honest, people getting ripped off on eBay because it's quite a vast topic really and not everybody knows I don't know everything I know really quite a little really compared to some people but we do live and learn so be very careful out there people there are new sets on eBay for example the 1200s Ducati monster motorbike set the RRP is 29.99 it's not a massive set it doesn't weigh a great deal fairly chunky box is probably about a third bigger than this box and the last one I saw was like almost 38 pounds and it said post free oh is it really is it really? So be careful out there, folks. Do your research and ask, and we'll try and help you. Bye for now.